it's, it's inexpensive, it's safer, and more importantly, it has a, a higher operational voltage, which is roughly about 4.1 volts. So if you put that all collectively together, it obviously gives you the luxury of being able to increase the energy densities of specifically LFP by uh, obviously further 20%, and that's the whole intention of adopting manganese. Milton Keynes, famous for its many, many, many roundabouts, immortalised in love actually back in 2003. But today, it's not traffic control that's making headlines here in Milton Keynes. It is in fact manganese, and more specifically LMFP. LFP batteries with a manganese energy density boost, essentially combining the affordability and thermal stability of LFP with the energy density of NMC. In other words, the battery world equivalent of having your cake and eating it too. So today we're here to meet the manganese masterminds at Intercourse Power, and this is the Everything Electric show. Try Everything Electric at our exhibitions in Australia, Canada and the UK. Next up, London. For those feeling a little bit lost, let's start with a quick recap of NMC versus LFP. Now, in a battery cell, there are three core components, the cathode, the anode and the electrolyte. When a battery cell is discharging, for example, if it's powering an electric motor in an EV, electrons travel from the anode in an external circuit, providing that electrical current. And meanwhile, charged lithium ions travel from the anode across the electrolyte to the cathode. And the materials that make up the cathode, that defines the battery chemistry. So, for example, in an NMC cell, the cathode is made of nickel manganese cobalt. And in an LFP cell, the cathode is made of lithium iron phosphate. So whilst improvements being made all the time to make batteries more energy dense, there are some characteristics that tend to distinguish NMC and LFP. LFP is generally cheaper, is safer because it has a greater thermal stability and has a longer lifetime, but NMC is generally more energy dense. Uh, so that means longer EV ranges for less battery weight. So to put some numbers to it, LFP generally has energy density of 150 to 210 watt hours per kilos, and NMC has something more like 200 to 300 watt hours per kilo. But what if we could take the best of both worlds? Well, that is precisely what Integral's power are doing by generating LMFP battery material. So LFP batteries with a sprinkling of manganese, meaning that they can get the energy density of NMC and the affordability and thermal stability of LFP. All sounds brilliant, obviously, but this is electrochemistry, which to the uninitiated might as well be wizardry because things get a little funky on the nanoscale. But in theory, adding manganese has three main effects. First of all, it raises the redox potential of a battery cell, so increasing the voltage and in turn increasing the energy density. Two, it can improve the lithium ion movement into and out of the cell, basically improving the charge and discharge rates and also ensuring that you get the full capacity utilisation of that battery cell as well. And lastly, it can improve and strengthen the cathode structure, so preventing active materials from wandering off and getting involved in various other side reactions, which ultimately degrades the battery cell over time. So it all sounds brilliant, but we know that in reality, things are a little bit challenging. Can you tell us why is manganese such a good ingredient to add to a battery cell? Well, to compare it against um, obviously precious metals, including nickel and cobalt, um, I would say it's, it's inexpensive, um, it's safer, and more importantly, it has a, a higher operational voltage, um, which is roughly about 4.1 volts. So if you put that all collectively together, it obviously gives you the luxury of being able to increase the energy densities of specifically LFP by uh, obviously further 20%, and that's the whole intention of obviously adopting manganese. So the higher the sort of manganese composition gets, which is the highest that we've made, 80%, that obviously allows you to push up the boundaries up to that 20% boost. So 20% more energy. So essentially you could either go 20% further with the same battery, or you could actually use a smaller battery to be able to go as far, which is obviously... Uh, absolutely. So talking about the actual uh, range improvement, so that 20% 20, uh, 20 energy density boost, mm -hmm. ultimately in the simpler terms, it refers to the 20% uplift in the range. So you can either have the joy of having a more condensed and lighter batteries, but, or as you rightly said, you can actually uh, outperform the uh, conventional LFPs. So obviously adding manganese to an LFP cell sounds brilliant, increasing energy density, improving C rate, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is it's quite challenging. Why is that? And how have Intercourse Power overcome some of those challenges? So um, I would say one of the biggest challenges when it comes down to manganese is that it's, it's a very much non-conductive material. So that obviously adds an awful lot of extra challenges when it comes down to the, the synthesis and development of the materials. 
which uh, there are certain ways around it, I guess, and that's exactly what Integral's Power has done. So we are ultimately leveraging from our unique particle properties or morphologies, which are, um, you know, it, I would say uniquely shaped compared to the conventional players. That's helping us to <clears throat> achieve a better particle uh, properties in terms of its size, in terms of its distribution range. That's obviously one of the uh, main advantages that Integral's Power has to be able to tackle that issue. Okay, so actually thinking about how it's structured within the cathode material. Is that, that is right. So there are multiple approaches in terms of the actual particle properties. There are different shapes, but what, we, what we've actually done, we've increased the dimensions of the particle properties at the nanomaterial level, which allows us to have beyond one dimension for a sort of a charging and discharge uh, cycle rates, which is obviously uh, a lot more uh, helpful when it comes down to um, retaining the high capacity or specific capacity, so to speak, because one of the main challenges, again, by increasing the manganese composition beyond specifically 50% is that the original capacity, the specific capacity of the cathode would drop, which, again, is because of the, as I said, the low conductivity, the poor lithium uh, diffusion, and many other aspects that have a key, uh, obviously, impact on, on this state. So by improving the particle morphology as well as its um, size, we have been able to rectify that issue and achieve the highest grade of manganese composition, which is at 80%. Oh my goodness. Okay, so obviously you want to add the manganese in order to get the increased energy density, but any um, additions over 50% incur lots of sort of challenges with regards to losing capacity in the cell. Absolutely. So all of the work that Ben's going on here has been addressing some of that such that you can reach that 80%. We're really excited to partner with Duracell Energy to showcase their amazing renewable energy solutions. If you want to reduce your energy bills and join the renewable energy transition, installing home battery storage and solar panels at home is a great way to start. Duracell Energy's ecosystem of products typically partners with solar panels, but they can be just as effective without it, particularly for electric vehicle owners or anyone looking to take control of their energy. And with Duracell Energy's Platinum Homeowner offer, viewers can get a custom service that pairs you with top quality products and the best installers in your area. Duracell Energy's batteries, inverters and DV chargers work together on one easy to use app. With features like dynamic tariff integration and grid services, you'll be able to maximize your return. Ready to get started? You can get your quote today. And don't forget, we're also giving away a Duracell Energy Bunny in every episode. Just answer the question about Fully Charged by following the link in the description. Good luck. What we can see here is a pilot line facility that's capable of producing 20 tonnes per year of that active cathode material, that LMFP. Now, this is essentially like a very pressurised oven, which takes all of those ingredients that make up that LMFP material. But how precisely it's synthesised, that of course is Integral's power secret sauce, so we can't share too many details on that. Now, as a pilot line facility, they're able to create the material. It comes out initially as a wet mixture. It's then the liquid is separated and the powder is dried. And that dry powder is sent on to cell manufacturers who can validate that material in a battery cell to see its performance. Now, this is all about test and validation, but clearly in order to commercialize, the scale of this needs to dramatically increase. So this has a capacity of 300 liters that will eventually increase to 40,000 liters, meaning that they'll be able to make a thousand tons per year. We know that the overall battery supply chain is overwhelmingly concentrated in China. Can the UK realistically compete? And what's the value in diversifying that supply chain so that we can produce materials here in the UK? Um, absolutely. So uh, it, it has been quite challenging to, to do so to this state, but I don't see a reason why this, uh, we won't be able to address that, uh, especially that Integral's Power is helping to facilitate that transition uh, on the basis that we are not using, for example, some of the uh, um, obviously precursors that are currently being developed in China. But more importantly, like precursors you mean? I'm referring to ultimately the precursors such as iron phosphate, which right, are right, some yeah. of the main raw materials that are being currently used for development of LFP as well as mm -hmm. LMFP. But more importantly, when it actually comes down to the uh, transition of, of the local supply chain, as I said, we're currently using um, pretty much all of our raw materials are being outsourced from Europe. Um, there are going to be many, many uh, opportunities within that landscape. Um, in terms of actually being able to contribute towards that transition, 
we always focus on the dollar per kilowatt hour as opposed to dollar per kilogram or I guess in a simpler way we want to make sure we are uh, price competitive in a sense that by uh, increasing uh, the performance metrics and achieving uh, unique um, performance metrics it allows us to actually be able to compete against also some of the major players in China because it is true that it, it is quite challenging to mm -hmm. actually compete with regards to an unfair competition that we have in that relationship in that relation but more importantly if we were to focus on achieving unique particle properties uh, most specifically with the, with the battery materials of course it would then allow us to have that edge and be able to compete in the performance rather mm. than just the actual dollar per kilogram of the materials which is mm. quite challenging to to do so so dollar per kilowatt hour that's the metric that we want to be looking at and if you can increase that energy density that equation becomes much more compelling rather than looking at this on a dollar per um, kilogram of material basis. Now here in the UK we're, we're very good at creating exceptional IP especially when it comes to battery technologies. We're maybe less good at scaling up to large-scale manufacture. So if you could be granted sort of one wish that would make your life scaling up here that much easier, what would you ask for? That is certainly a challenging one. So, um, you know, it's, it, is, it is becoming um, I would say it's relatively becoming a bit easier at this stage based on discussion that we've had with the local government and there is certainly uh, a will to make that transition to make UK a, 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 a lot more appealing in terms of manufacturing and the scalability but, but often it's, it comes down to the actual, actually having access to um, further government supports uh, specifically uh, financial backings because we've, we always have that value of death of going from a small, small scale lab scale to uh, and more of a commercial line and there is a, a, a huge gap so we need to actually bridge that gap mm -hmm. by having further um, access to uh, fundings such mm -hmm. as North America and, and other areas where they are heavily invested in this in mm -hmm. this regards and uh, obviously um, you know further finance would help us to make more mistakes I guess mm -hmm. that's that's always our look at it because you know any mistakes that we make there's there's a joy of learning the things that we shouldn't have done and how we can further improve and I think that's one of the biggest advantages that we can have to, to help us to accelerate this commercialization of the technologies in the UK. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to fund going from tens of tons to thousands of tons per year. Absolutely. It has been really wonderful to come here today and learn a little bit more about the work that Integrals Power are doing. Energy density is such a hugely important topic because anything that we can do to improve it means that we can go further with less and ensure that our batteries are that much less impactful on the planet. But what's also clear is that this is a pilot line facility and if we are serious about diversifying battery supply chains, we also need to be serious about supporting the commercialization of these technologies. So I am so excited to watch this space. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, Thank you for watching.